Then let's go to the improvements that are more precast focused. First tool I'm going to introduce is the wall layout tool. I have to say that I'm thrilled about this tool because we have developed this for a long time and finally being able to tell you about this. Wall layout is not only for the precast detailer, but this tool supports design process from conceptual design to the detailing. It is the most convenient tool for creating wall structures. You can create walls with lower level of detail and continue making more detailed geometry if needed. Or you can model the wall straight away with all the details. As said, wall layout supports all common wall types. As a precast detailer, you can design and detail products like sandwich walls, solid panels or double walls. Modern technology in the user interface makes it easy to use the same tool for any product. Wall type is a combination of different layers that forms the wall type. Layer can be structural, insulation, foil, void or surface. Different layers can be either split within the elementation or not. Here is a setting for double wall. I either create the wall type with concrete infill that is not part of the cast unit or create it as a void. Notice how the wall type preview updates when making changes to the layer. Then predefined settings are loaded for sandwich wall. Here I want to show how the default offsets of each layer can be set. Last you can see how new surface layer is added. Tool supports concrete surface treatments that you might need to use for marking the surfaces in the drawings. Now let's see the tool in action. Let's create a sandwich wall on top of architect's reference drawing. Creation type is continuous and the creation can be finished with middle mouse button. All walls are automatically connected to each other. That is how you would define the wall layout of the building. Next, the openings will be added. First option to create an opening is to type the sill height and the window height. Then it's easy to pick the location and the length from the reference drawing. To create the door opening, just type the sill height to zero and pick the locations from the reference drawing. After creating the openings, it's possible to modify the opening size and shape with direct modification. Another way of creating openings is picking the points from the wall face. In this example, you'll see the architect reference model. You can create rectangular or polygonal openings. Here the points are picked from the reference model. Openings can be moved by dragging the opening or copied with holding the control button while dragging. Same modeling method would be used for internal solid walls in the building. As you already saw in the wall layout creation, the walls were connected automatically. New connection component called wall layout connector were applied to connect those walls. Connector supports the detailed connections or can be used for only setting the geometry of the wall right. Here you can see the created connector more in detail. Connector dialog has also dynamic previews for connecting layers. It makes it very easy to understand what kind of detail you are about to create. Gaps between layers are typed for each layer. Three different connection types can be toggled between the layers. Now a setting for a sandwich wall is loaded. Connector now creates a detailed connection between inner shells. Any connection component can be applied and wall-to-wall -wall connection is created in this example. Seam gap between walls can still be modified from the connector dialog. If there are any changes in the wall type, 
the connector updates accordingly. As you can see here, when the layer thickness is changed. Now, how about splitting the wall into cast units? Creating seams between walls is very easy. In this example, I will first create seams without any details. Vertical seam is created to desired location by picking the point from the model. Then I will load the settings for this sandwich wall case. As you can see, again, the detailed connection is created. I will apply those settings and create one more scene. As you can see, it will be already detailed. One really cool feature of wall layout is its possibility to modify the geometry of the wall with the direct modification. For example, to create a rich facade, I can just drag the point in the wall and form the new shape. The connections are beautifully updated. And if I would like to split this wall with the horizontal seam, I could do that with the polyseam creation command. There we go. And just to prove, the wall is now a separate cast unit. OK, back to the openings. Many of you may think that there are a lot of details in the sandwich wall windows. And that kind of row opening are no good when you need to detail the walls. But it is. Again, you can either create detailed opening from the beginning or set the details later. Just select the window and apply the details. Opening geometry is recognized and converted to a detailing component. And yes, in Tecla Structures 2016, detailed openings with the door and window combination can be created with sandwich wall window component. OK. If you are still not amazed and waiting for the wow factor in the wall layout package, I have one more application to show you. Wall layout contains an application for optimizing precast design when dividing the wall into elements. As you know, there are a lot of different reasons that affects how the wall should be divided to elements. There are size limitations at the factory pallet, size limitations at transportation, weight limitations at factory crane, and in the crane on the site. For those cases where architectural reasons are not defining the same locations, we have a tool, wall layout elementation. Now let's go back to that double wall model. Here, the final corner of the building has just been designed. Typically, in double wall buildings, the architectural reasons doesn't play that big role in elementation. Now, let's open the elementation application. First, I want to optimize the elementation by length of the walls. Here, my preferred length is 8 meters and second is 6 meters. Wall is split the three cast units and the cross length of the two walls is 8 meters. Please notice that the gaps and offsets in the corner connections are taken into account. Second, I want to split the walls by number. I want this split option is very two useful cast when trying to optimize that all the walls could be casted with the same formwork. Now walls should have exactly the same pallet length. And as you can see, the seam is created in the same way that it has been created manually, which can be modified with the direct modification. Third option is to split the walls by weight. If you want to get as heavy walls as possible, this is where you save a lot of time, especially when there are openings that you want to take into account. Again, you can see from the object browser at the bottom that all the walls are slightly under the set weight.
Last option, but not the least, is same as previous, but now the weight depends on the crane lifting capacity. It's possible to define the crane lifting capacity chart and even make a cool preview of the chart. Again, a lot of time is saved and errors avoid. I'm selecting the walls and again you can see that the walls further from the crane are lighter. So just define your project element limitations, run the application, and you have an instant sophisticated guess of the elementation. This is very powerful, for example, when creating your tender. And like I said, after the elementation, you can still modify the locations of the seams very easily. As a short summary, you can split the walls by length or height. Yes, it's possible also to create horizontal seams or by number or static weight or dependent on the crane chart. You still have rules for minimum and maximum dimensions and maximum weight. And if you're using a other parameter for elementation like elementation by length, those values will still apply. You have the option to define how close the seam can be of an opening or just ignore the openings. Also, elementation takes manually inserted seams into account because there might be architectural reasons that seams are located in a certain location. I guess you understand the benefits of this application, so no need to point it out much more. Okay, detailing manager. Detailing Manager is another great new tool that we have developed to support the workflow from design to detailing. Actually, we should have had this kind of tool for our precast customers long time ago. With this tool, it's possible to set up the rules for detailing to follow up the design intent. With this, it's much faster to insert multiple details to either one cast unit or for entire model if you will. Let me try to explain how this tool works. Here I have a solid precast slab. I know that there are three different tools that I should use for a slab. I open the detailing manager. Here I can first choose what tool I want to insert. I choose the tool for slab lifters. I choose the desired attribute settings and component input type. Finally, I choose the filter. Filter is used for defining what kind of parts in that cast unit should get that detail. In this lab, I would not need to use it because there are no other parts attached. Here I select mesh bars for the reinforcement and again attribute settings and the filter. Finally, I choose another reinforcing component for the U-hooks and the ring reinforcement. Now detailing manager is inserted from the component catalog and the detailing is done. I could use this tool also as an application. Let me just copy another slab on the side. So now I can select these two slabs and create to select it. Imagine the possibilities of this together with the organizer. And I can insert the details as detailing manager plugin or as a separate component then those will not know that they were inserted 
by the detailing manager. As you can see, I can open the dialogs of the actual detailing components that has been used. Now let's continue with an example of a sandwich wall. I have created the rules for detailing the sandwich wall. I can use the wall layout tool as an input. It means that all the cast units created by wall layout will get those details. As you know, there are several different components used for detailing a sandwich wall. This really speeds up your detailing process. Now you don't have to try and find all the correct tools from the catalog, load the correct settings and add the details wall by wall. And if you add the details wall by wall, you might miss one. And one great benefit when using this detailing manager together with wall layout as an input is that if you create a new seam, so you want to split the wall into two cast units, you can see that all the details are created to both of the cast units. Here is one more example of how those filter rules could be utilized. The rules for what kind of lifting hook should be created for a solid wall. Rules for lifting component settings has been defined according to wall's weight and height. Heavier the wall, larger the lifting hooks. Also, if the wall is higher than 4 meters, additional lifting hooks are inserted to the side of the wall. Again, if opening is created, it makes the wall lighter and because of that, lifters are automatically updated to smaller size.